Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm making a fall leaf banner using the Cricut foil tool. I haven't used the foil tool in a long time and I forgot how much fun it is and it adds so much pretty detail to your projects. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. I would love it if you subscribed if you are new and let's get into the video. For my leaves, I found images in Cricut Design Space. So I'm going to click on my images and I typed in fall leaves. Here's the one that I found. It's included with Cricut Access, but you can see that it also says free. Sometimes these are free for just a little while and then sometimes they end up costing if you don't have Cricut Access. I had to do a little searching before making this video to make one of these images work with the foil tool and I'll show you how this one worked. So I'm going to insert this into Cricut Design Space. You can see that these leaves have these little dashes on it. Those are score lines if you wanted to fold them. But what makes this image great is I can change those score lines into foil lines. I'm only going to be using four of these images, so I'm going to hit ungroup and I am going to delete this one. And I'm just going to move these around a little bit and decide what order I want the leaves to go in. Okay, these are the four leaves I want to use and how I want them to look on the banner. Now I'm going to change them to the color that I want. This first one I'm going to leave it this maroon color and I'll leave this one a maroon color as well. But I'm going to change this color to orange. As you can see, the color option isn't available. That's because it has this score line attached. You can either go up to ungroup or what I'm going to do is just select just on that leaf layer and I'll come up here and change it to yellow. Actually, I'm going to do this one orange. Then I'm going to come to this one, just select the leaf and I'll make this one yellow. With the banner, I want it to have more than just four leaves, so I'm actually going to duplicate each one and it'll have eight leaves total. But what I want to do first is figure out my sizing and get my score lines before I duplicate it. That way I don't have to change those other leaves as well, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to change my score lines to my foil lines. So I have this one selected. I am going to go over to my layers panel and select on score. I'm going to come up to the top and select the drop down. In the drop down, you can see that you can change it to several different things. I'm going to go to foil, and the foil tips come with fine, medium, and bold. For this one, I want to do bold. If you have lots of intricate pieces with your foiling, um, fine usually is better, but this one I think bold will stand out the best. And you can see it automatically selected gold, which is the color that I'm going to be using, so I don't have to go up there and change it. And you can kind of see how cool that's going to look. So now I'm going to come over to this one and I'll do the exact same thing. And I'll do the same thing for the other two. If you were going to do silver, you can change it to silver. Um, whatever color you're going to be doing. So I'll just keep mine at gold. Now I'm just going to figure out my sizing. I want to do around three to four inches for the leaves. So for this one, it's at 4.7. I'm just going to make it maybe a tiny bit smaller. And then this one, I'll just make it a little bit smaller also just to kind of match with this leaf. It doesn't have to be perfect. I kind of want them all different sizes. I like that for my sizing and now one more thing I want to do before I duplicate all of these is instead of having to go in and hole punch these, I'm going to put some holes, I'm going to have the Cricut cut out the holes that the garland will go through. I'm going to grab my circle, then I'm going to zoom in, I'll make this smaller. Now I'm just going to line this up on here. I don't want just one hole because sometimes the leaves will turn, so I'm going to do two on each side of all the leaves. I'm going to select both and hit align to bottom so that these are lined up. I probably won't do that for all of them. I think that one looks good. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the other leaves. I just hit duplicate again and I am going to add some more circles in here. 
These ones I'm doing a little bit at an angle because I want the leaf to be turned like this. This leaf is going to be pretty straight and oh, in this one I want it to turn a little bit. So far, I'm just eyeballing these. Like I said, I'm doing these a little bit at a different angle. And then this one, I want it to be straight again. So I'm just gonna hit shift on my keyboard, select the other circle, go to align and align to bottom. And that just makes it all lined up there. You also don't wanna put it too close to the edge because you don't want it to rip or anything. I think that looks great. Now what I need to do is slice these circles out. So I'm gonna go to this leaf first and you can only slice two layers at a time. So what I'm gonna do is weld these two circles together. So I have one selected, I just hit shift on my keyboard and select the other one. And I'm gonna come down at the bottom and select weld. Now I'm gonna highlight over this whole thing. And if you look in the layers panel, I have my leaf selected and I have my two circles selected. And you can still see the slice buttons grayed out. That's because I also have my foil in there. So for now, I'm just gonna hide it. Then I'm going to slice it out. You can see on the top, it'll say slice result. What I'm gonna do now is just select on that and hit delete. And then I'll select on the circle again. It's selecting the whole leaf, so I need to go over to my layers panel and select it that way. Then I'll hit delete, and you can see it adds those holes in there. Now I need to get that foil line back. You can see it brought the leaf all the way down here, and my foil is right here. So what I'm gonna do is unhide that, but I also need to right click and send this to the front. And there it is. It looked like it disappeared for a second, but that's because it was behind the leaf. Now the foil lines and the leaf are not attached anymore, and you'll want this attached before you click on make it. So I'm just gonna highlight over both of these again. You can see in the layers panel that they're both selected, and I'll hit attach. So that leaf is done. There were a few extra steps with that, so I'll show you once again with this leaf. So what I'm gonna do again is just select these circles, and once again I hit shift on my keyboard. I'll hit weld. I have these welded together and I'm going to slice it out with my leaf. This time I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to hide the foil part and I'll select over these and I'll hit slice. You can see the slice result. You can select it in the layers panel or over here and I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard and I'll select the two orange dots from the layers panel here and I'll delete those. So now it's cut out and I need to get the foil back. So what I need to do is come down here, select that eye to bring it back. And once again, it is at the way bottom. Another thing you can do is bring this all the way up to the top and it'll bring it up there. Or you can right click and hit send to front. So we have that, but I need to attach it. So I will just have both of these layers selected and I'll hit attach. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other two, but I will just speed it up so that you don't have to watch me slowly do it. When I click on my leaf, my width went down a little bit and I cannot figure out why. So I am not sure, but I'm gonna make these a little bit bigger because I want this to be closer to four inches for the width. So I'm just gonna adjust my sizing really quickly. Okay, I just made those a little bit bigger. Now that I have all of that done, I'm ready to duplicate all of these. So I'll select on my first one and hit duplicate. And then I'll do the same thing for the other ones. This leaf is gonna be coming after this leaf, so I don't want them both to be maroon. So I'm just gonna keep the pattern of the colors. I'll change this one to orange. And then I'll just keep the same pattern for this one. I'll do yellow.
Okay, I love how these look, so I'm ready to click on Make It. My cardstock size is 8.5 by 11 sheets, not 12 by 12, so I need to change this to that size. And then I'll do that for the other two. And now one other thing that I want to do, I'm going to be putting foil over this, but this puts it right at the top edge and I have to have enough room for the tape for the foil. So I'm gonna move these down a little bit so that there's enough room for that. Also, you don't want any of the foil to get on your mat. The mat's so sticky that it'll ruin the foil. So you'll want to kind of adjust this a little bit. This will give about half an inch on the top and bottom. That will give me room to add my tape over my foil. So I'm gonna do the same thing for these. Also, the gold foil that I have comes in a 12 by 12 sheet. So I'm gonna cut it down to eight inches by 10 inches. And for the yellow, I'm gonna cut it down six inches by probably five, maybe five and a half inches. Once again, you have to have enough room for the tape. Now I'll click continue. I'm going to choose medium cardstock. This does say 80 pounds and my cardstock is 65 pounds, but I found that the medium cardstock setting has worked great for my 65 pound cardstock. When you look down here, you can see it's telling me to load the foil transfer tool first. Then it tells you to tape the gold foil shiny side up and then it says next it'll cut out with the fine point blade. Also, I always like to go to less pressure for my foil tool because it's a really delicate material, so I just find that that works a little bit better. I bought this pack of cardstock from Michaels. It had a great variety of fall colors in it. The Recollections brand is always my go-to for cardstock because it cuts really well on the Cricut machine. Here's the package of Cricut foil transfer sheets I'll be using. They are 12 by 12 sheets and come in a pack of eight. These are all gold. They also include sheets of tape. I had a scrap piece in here that I have already used and that was enough to use for my yellow leaves. Here I'm using my Cricut cutting mat to cut down the sizing of my foil to eight inches by 10 inches. You'll want to make sure to cut it down to the size you'll need since like I said earlier, you don't want the foil to touch the sticky part of the mat. It'll completely ruin it. I know from experience and had to throw away a sheet and I struggled to get the foil off of my sticky mat as well. I add my orange cardstock first since that is what the Cricut will cut out first, then add my foil on top. Since I brought the images down half an inch, I was able to bring my foil down about half an inch and that gave me room to add my tape. You'll want to add the tape to all four sides and I also decided to tape the corners here to make sure the foil stayed down really well. I grab the foil transfer tip with the three rings, which means it's the bold one, then add it to my tool. It has a magnet that pulls it in. You'll also want to make sure to push your white star wheels all the way to the side of the Cricut machine because it'll leave indents on the foil if you don't. I swap out my tools and load the mat into my machine and the Cricut will add the foil to the cardstock. I was worried about using my Cricut Maker 3 machine because it goes crazy fast. This is one of the new features on the machine and I thought for sure it was going to rip the foil, but it went way slower for the foil tool so the machine must know that it just needed to go slower for this. Now that it's done adding the foil to the orange cardstock, it says do not unload the mat. That's such an automatic thing just to unload it, unload it right away, but you don't want to do that. So what you do first is remove the gold foil and then load the fine point blade. So here I am just removing the tape and the foil. Once that's done, I switch out my blades to my fine point blade. Then I press the go button and the Cricut will cut out the leaves. I'm using one of my older green mats, but you might want to use your blue light grip mat if your green one is new and really sticky. And here I just bend the mat backwards to remove the cardstock pieces. It's kind of hard to see the foil right after it cuts, so here's a close up and I love how it turned out. I think it looks so pretty. 
You can't reuse the foil that's already been used, but I try to save as much as the scraps as possible. I remove the tape and can save a little of the sheet. I cut the next sheet down to 6 inches by 5.5 inches and I add it to my yellow cardstock. When you tape the foil down, you want to make it as flat as possible. It's not always going to be perfect like you can see here, but it doesn't have to be totally flat. I follow the same process for this. I place my foil tool inside the machine and load the mat. The Cricut will add the foil. When it was done, I removed the tape and foil, and as you can see here, the tape picked up some of the cardstock. It's pretty sticky, so my next foil projects, I might give washi tape a try instead. Thankfully, it didn't mess up the project at all, though. Then I add my fine point blade back and press the go button on my machine, and it'll cut out the leaves. I follow the same exact process for the last set of leaves, but when I added the tape, I forgot to add tape on the corners, and it's hard to see, but the top left corner picked up a little bit. The foil did when the Cricut was going, and it ripped it, so I had to get a new foil sheet on and start over. For this one, I just used one large piece of tape that went all the way down to the corners. Here's the jute twine that I'm going to be using. I have the leaves set up how I wanted in what order, and then I just string this through each leaf. Once again, here's how it turned out. I love the foil tool, especially around the holidays. I wanna make something for Christmas with the foil tool. Let me know if you've been using yours and what you've been making. Also, I decided to add this leaf banner in my craft room over my cube shelves. And I have a video coming up where I'm going to be organizing my craft room and I can't wait for that video to go up. So make sure you're subscribed and I hope you enjoy the video.